In the fall of 2011, Food for the Hungry invited my wife and I to take a trip to Haiti to experience more of their work. Every time I interact with poverty, it's always a life-changing experience. It's no surprise that these three days would be no different. We're on our way to a village known as Francois. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah. The right accent? Francois. Yeah. You say Francois. <laughs> Francois. The highlight of our trip was a day in this small village of Francois. Francois is a new community for Food for the Hungry and their work there is just beginning. You could already sense their presence. Despite their difficult living conditions, the kids greeted us with so much joy. Joy that, we were told, was really only recently being found amongst the people who lived there. Our short time in Francois began with a visit to the home of Donald, one of the newest kids that Kate and I sponsored through Food for the Hungry. I got to teach Donald a few magic tricks during our visit. It was unforgettable. Hey, I'm here with my friend Donald, and uh, Kate and I have had a chance to sponsor him through the work of FH. We're here in their home. Their family has been so kind to us today to let us come into their home and learn more about their lives and their family. And this is a really awesome experience for us, and we just want to give you an idea of what it felt like. After spending time with Donald and his family in his home, we recognized that none of the homes in the village had access to clean running water. They had to hike to get to it. It was about a two hour hike and we were invited to take it. It was hot, muggy, and almost entirely uphill. They run, <laughs> we uh, gently walk down to make sure they don't fall. But uh, this walk and hike is wearing me out. And uh, as you can tell, the girls that we just passed uh, two of them were carrying buckets of water. One of them was at least a five-gallon bucket. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried to pick up a five-gallon bucket of water before, but it's insanely heavy. The longer we hiked, the more I started to complain. They said it was going to take 30 minutes, but at about the hour, hour and a half mark, I started whining and asking if we were there yet. Until I turned around the corner and saw a group of little girls. They were probably between the ages of five and ten years old. And they were kneeled down underneath this little stream of water filling up their buckets because that's what they had to do to survive. I just can't get over what I'm experiencing right now. These kids are walking for miles through a trail that I just struggled on because it's slippery and muddy and uh, there's rocks and I just can't get over the fact that they do this every day. They're just kids. As we began the hike back to the village, all I could do is begin to cry. One of the Haitian men that was hiking with us noticed that something was wrong and asked what it was. I tried to explain how difficult it was for me to watch these little girls have to walk this far every day just for water. A few moments of silence passed, and out of genuine curiosity, he asked me this. How far do you have to walk to get your water? <laughs> what do you say to that? I turned to our translator and I was like, um, how do you say I get off the couch and I turn a little knob? And she tried to explain to him what a faucet was because he'd never seen one with his own eyes. And when he finally realized that I had one of those in my house, his eyes lit up in awe. Maybe you can begin to understand why I'm so passionate about helping these kids. She said, um, I asked her she was five years old. Oui. And said, no, um, no, no, no. She said, no, no, no. She's maybe 13, 14, 15 years older. Kessie and Kessie. Basically, she um, was not well developed. So I was guessing that she was. Kessie and What? These are kids that are in the sponsorship program through Food for the Hungry and don't actually have sponsors yet. These are real kids that really do need our help. So this is. This is what makes it real for me to be able to st stand here next to them, see the homes they live in, talk to their families. This is why you also need to get involved. 
So I'm here in the home of Kenya. As you can see, there's no electricity, so we're having to use the, the light from the camera here. Uh, this is Kenya right here, and she is sponsored through Shoot for Hungry. And uh, <laughs> this here is, as you can see through FH, when you have the opportunity to send letters to your sponsored child, they mean the world. These were here in the home as if it was a prized treasure. This is from the Pastor family. Here's a picture of a Pastor wow. family that they took the time to send. So Pastor family, I don't know whoever you are, but this is the kind of difference that you're making in the lives of these children. Um, Kenya will never forget you. She has your letters. She'll continue to read them and write back. And so thank you for what you did on behalf of this child. This is amazing. Because of kids like Kenya and Donald being sponsored, they now have access to basic needs that we take for granted. But more importantly, they now have hope. And hope is a powerful thing. It changes lives. It brings joy amidst times of difficulty and sorrow. And through the work of FH and people just like you, the world is changing one life at a time. Although if you sponsor a child, the truth is two lives are being changed because neither you or the kid you sponsor will ever be the same.